What's going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, June 3rd, and things are starting to heat up here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And with the increasing heat and humidity, we are beginning to see our first signs of disease in our vegetable garden. That's why on today's video, I'm going to show you one of the most interesting and unique, but still natural and organic ways of not only preventing, but also controlling disease outbreaks in both our vegetable gardens and on our fruit trees. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new videos video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. And that natural and organic means of preventing and controlling diseases is to use one of these natural biological beneficial bacteria sprays. Now in this video I'm going to explain to you how this works, how to apply it, and if you decide this is something for you I'll make sure to place a link in the video description for your convenience and I'll also link to it in my Amazon storefront under Disease Prevention and Pest Control. Biological means of disease control such as these use beneficial bacteria in order to protect your plants from contracting disease. Now they do work to control diseases once they start, but they're even more effective as a preventative and they can be used as both a foliar spray or a soil drench. Now look, I'm not even going to begin to attempt to pronounce the name of this specific strain of bacteria, but I will let you know how this specific strain of bacteria works. It is considered to be a root colonizing biocontrol bacterium, and it is used to fight some plant root pathogens in agriculture, aquaculture, and hydroponics. The way this specifically works is it uses the principle of competitive exclusion to outcompete unwanted pathogens. Now, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Competitive exclusion out competing pathogens, what exactly does that mean? Well, in ecology, the competitive exclusion principle states that two species which compete for the same limited resource cannot coexist at constant population values. When one species has even the slightest advantage over another, the one with the advantage will dominate in the long term. This leads either to an extinction of the weaker competitor or to an evolutionary or behavioral shift towards a different ecological niche. Have you ever wondered why it's extremely rare for people to be afflicted with multiple pathogens at the same time? Yes, it is possible and it does happen, but it's really unlikely that a person would have both the cold and the flu at the exact same time. That's because these two viruses will basically compete for the resources throughout the body, and although they're trying to take you over, they will also compete against each other. So it's really unlikely for you to have two pathogens take over your body at the exact same time one ultimately beats out the other. Now look, I'm not a doctor and I don't pretend to play one on TV. I'm just creating generalities for you so you kind of understand the concept behind products like this. What this product basically does is it colonizes your plant with a natural bacteria that will take over the receptors of the plant without actually harming the plant. And because this bacteria is going to be colonized all over the plant, it basically doesn't leave a lot of room for other viruses and bacteria to colonize and take over the plant. So it outcompetes them. When your plants are covered with this, it basically puts them in a suit of armor and the other viruses and bacteria cannot take hold. If this is the first time that you've ever heard of a biological disease control agent like this, you may be thinking, that's awesome. This is using nature to do the work for us instead of using basically some kind of chemical to try and prevent or kill off some kind of fungal or bacterial infection. But hold your horses, like everything else, there are some downsides and Basically, since you're spraying this on your plants, you kind of need dry weather for this to work because if you have a lot of rain, you can basically wash off this beneficial bacteria from your plants and that will leave them open for attack once again. So you have to have a routine when it comes to spraying. You need to apply this regularly, especially after it rains and the plants dry back out in order to maintain that colony of beneficial bacteria. So the way this works is you will mix one teaspoon of the Monterey Complete Disease Control with one gallon of water and apply directly to the plants using some type of sprayer and you need to spray them just enough 
that you wet all of the leaves down to the point where they just start to drip. Then, to maintain the disease control, you need to repeat this every 7 to 10 days. This is the concentration and the frequency that you will need when the weather's still pretty good, it's fairly dry, and your plants are so far free of disease. Now, if the disease is prevalent or the environmental conditions deteriorate, like high humidity and high rainfall that we get here on the southeastern coast, you have to increase the mixing ratio to about one tablespoon per gallon and then shorten the application duration to every three to seven days because it becomes much more difficult to maintain the beneficial bacteria colony when it starts raining and it's very humid. And of course, if your plants become infected with some type of disease, you will have to maintain that higher concentration and more frequent application period to keep the disease under control. Now that I've explained to you how exactly this biological form of disease control works, I'm going to apply it. And in order to apply it, I'm going to use my super awesome ULV sprayer that if you've been a long time follower of my channel, you've definitely seen this bad boy before. If you've never seen something like this before, I'll make sure to link to a video above that shows you exactly how to use it. And if you're interested in a tool like this, I will make sure to direct link to it down in the video description as well. This thing has saved me so much time and money versus using a standard pump sprayer. Now because it's starting to get pretty warm and humid and the rains are starting here where I live, we are going to apply it at the more powerful one tablespoon per gallon rate. And that's what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. So we want to give this just a little bit of a light shake. And this is a two gallon ULV fogger. So we're going to give one tablespoon two tablespoons into this cup of water that I like to pre-mix and stir around. Then after the concentrate has been pre-mixed, I'm going to add it directly into the sprayer. Then we're going to fill the sprayer up with two gallons of water. Now that the spray has been mixed, we are going to follow the instructions and we are going to coat the plants from the top to the bottom, the front and the back, until the spray starts to lightly drip from the edges of the leaves. However, we are going to take special care to spray and coat the undersides of the leaves because disease is much more likely to colonize underside the leaves because the tops of the leaves are constantly bleached by the UV rays of the sun which sanitizes the tops. You're much more likely to have some type of infection take hold on the undersides of the leaves. And that is how you apply the spray to your plants. Now if you live in an area that doesn't have persistent heat and humidity and you don't have a really bad thunderstorm season and you don't get a lot of precipitation in the summer, this spray may be the only spray you need to control disease in your yard and garden under most circumstances. However, if you live in the persistently hot, humid, rainy south like I do, there will probably come a time where the bacterial protection is no longer enough and the diseases will take over and you will have to switch to something a little stronger in order to control the diseases. When that day comes, you can switch to something like liquid copper or also hydrogen peroxide to try and tackle those diseases. Liquid copper is a really good natural fungicide. I'll make sure to drop a link in the video description for this exact product. I start using this when the disease pressure gets really bad when our heavy rain season starts. And also I will link to a video in the description about how to use a homemade hydrogen peroxide spray to kill most leaf diseases on your sensitive plants. But no matter what the case, even if you live in a place where disease pressure is inevitable and this spray will eventually fail, it will greatly delay the onset of disease. So I'm able to delay spraying the stronger stuff like liquid copper in my garden when I start with this product earlier. I get healthier plants for a much longer time and it is definitely worth the investment no matter where you live. However, please keep in mind that this is a natural bacteria concentrate. You cannot store this out in a hot garage or a hot shed. It needs to be stored in an area indoors with controlled room temperatures with no exposure to light. So I actually keep my natural disease prevention spray next to my spinosad, which is a natural pest control bacteria, and I keep them inside my laundry room where there are no windows and the temperature is a controlled room temperature all throughout the year. And that right there is one of the most natural, organic, and safest means of preventing and controlling diseases in your yard and garden. I've been using this product for years and I've found it to be very effective at least until the dead of 
summer when the rains and the humidity are so bad that nothing really works anyway. So it's really nice that I can use this to extend the healthy period of my plants and I don't have to break out the stronger concentrates until much later in the season. So I think no matter who you are and where you live and what your climate is, you can find a great use for this in your garden. And like I said, it's one of the safest and most natural things that you can use to prevent disease. And it works much better as a prevention than a cure. So please keep that in mind. The sooner you can institute it, the better the results will be. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about this product right here or any of the products that I use in my garden in general, I will link to this product and everything else I use down in the video description in my Amazon storefront link. So check out the Amazon storefront link for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.